Hello and welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey. I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. Got a great episode for you today. Our guests are Dr. Greg Mogul. He is chief medical officer at 4D Medical and Tom Harris. He is vice president of hardware, also a 4D Medical. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us today. Great to be surrounding us. So let's start with introductions. Greg, can you go first? Sure. Um, Greg Mogul, as you said, Chief Medical Officer. I am a uh, radiologist, practicing radiologist. I live in the Bay Area. I think that's pretty obvious uh, from my background there. Um, and uh, I've had a career uh, as an active duty military physician. I remain active in Veterans Affairs through the American College of Radiology and uh, work and have passionately worked in the space of lung cancer screening and imaging informatics in both academic uh, settings as well as in community health with a long uh, turn at Kaiser Permanente and now 4D Medical. All right, very good. Tom, how about you? So, Brian, I'm, I'm VP at VP of Hardware with 4D Medical. I've got a background in mechanical engineering and product design development. I, I'm in Melbourne in Australia and I run the facility that 4D Medical has in Port Melbourne where we have a team of um, mechanical engineers, bio, mechatronics engineers, and we develop the, the hardware portfolio of 40 Medical, our flagship product being the XV Scanner. Excellent. So, uh, Greg, you've been on the show before. We've had your founder, Andreas Foras, on before. But uh, can you give us a little bit of update on 40 Medical, what you guys do, and kind of uh, where you stand right now? Sure, Brian. Uh, quickly, as a reminder, uh, 40 Medical has the largest portfolio in the world of dedicated lung functional and structural imaging technologies. We use a variety of technologies from AI through mathematical modeling and several others, always with a focus on pulmonary health. Um, that's really uh, where we, that's where we live and that's where we put our stake in the ground. We feel that, that uh, respiratory health remains one of the least understood areas and even in imaging still uh, lacks a lot of the quantification that our neurologic and uh, dedicated cardiac imagers have, have moved to. And we've had a, a, a really a big year of growth, um, both here in the U.S. and internationally. Some major changes. We have completed our acquisition of Imbio, which is a large um, and successful company that uh, has a, a really wonderful portfolio of quantitative CT imaging tools that are well documented. Um, this really rounds out our portfolio, as I said, to our existing functional measures where we demonstrate exactly how the lungs work. We demonstrate airflow, we demonstrate ventilation, um, and putting that together with the um, world-leading applications in quantitative imaging give us both structure and function, always really fixed on the idea of post-acquisition processing. So we want to bring this to really every imaging center. Anyone who has a CT scanner or a fluoroscopy device can use our technologies. So, so that was a really important big growth, which has also pushed us a lot farther into the lung cancer screening field, where the incidental findings that are becoming increasingly important they're really right in our wheelhouse, identifying early undiagnosed COPD, interstitial disease, coronary artery calcifications. This is a really major opportunity to broadly impact um, population health. We have been lucky enough to um, to uh, become uh, to develop a reseller agreement with Philips, and so now we are excited at uh, RSNA. We'll we'll be uh, having a, a joint talk with Philips discussing some of the innovations that we're working on. And our, our relationship with Philips is very significantly centered on the uh, effort that we have made uh, around veteran healthcare. We are a very uh, veteran-oriented company. 40% of our U.S. staff are actually military veterans, as am I. And, uh, you know, the opportunity to dramatically impact uh, the overall lung health of veterans um, has become a more important, more and more important issue over the last few years. The Veterans Administration has had a very successful lung cancer screening program and their ability to uh, expand that with incidental findings and even to populations who have had toxic exposures and deployment who have very different risk factors than the traditional lung cancer screening community. We're excited to be partnered 
uh, with them and and with Philips, um, we think we can bring a lot of infrastructure from uh, the in, in the across the entire imaging ecosystem, from acquisition to reporting. So um, it's been a big year. Um, and finally, uh, you know, although as we are known as a software company, that is our main work, and we do post acquisition processing on traditional CTs that are available everywhere. We have always been seeking and producing, uh, at a small level, a very bespoke device. Frankly, it is a brand new imaging modality that that we make that has been built uh, from the ground up specifically for evaluating lung function and doing it in a way that no other imaging modality can can perform. And we've had that device at RSNA. Uh, the last year or two to show people. We have a new version of it, and um, we have a lot of advancements in that regard that I'm excited to tell you about today. Great, and we'll take a look at that just in a in a uh, in a minute. So, can Greg, can you tell me what does the hardware device do, or or maybe Tom, you might want to pick this one up. What does the the hardware device do that that maybe is a little bit unique from your software offering? So the, I'll, I'll talk about the traditional capture method that, that, that ties into the current software at the moment, and that is off a, a standard fluoro C arm where you capture five angles of, of different breaths. The hardware that we're developing is a unique device where it's got four beam lines that capture the take the acquisition within the same breath. So we've got we've got great resolution, not only uh, spatial resolution, but contemporary resolution. So temporal resolution. So we're able to capture that same breath from four, four angles at the same time simultaneously. Interesting. Now, 40 Medical recently got funding from the Australian government to investigate what's called CTVQ technology. Can you explain what that is and maybe how it relates to some of the other things that yeah. I've been talking about just now? Be happy to. We are uh, we have uh, global regulatory clearance on our ventilation technologies, and I think from the very beginning, as soon as we talked to radiologists and pulmonologists about being able to document ventilation visibly in the human lungs with the use of no inhaled contrast or injected contrast, the immediate question has always been, what about perfusion? And we've been working on perfusion for a few years now, and we are uh, we're very uh, excited to announce that while we still are in the preparatory phase, we've made really significant advancements of providing what essentially will be ventilation perfusion imaging without injected contrast, without any inhaled or injected radiopharmaceuticals. We, uh, we've been working with uh, uh, the regulatory bodies to uh, complete the studies that are necessary for submission. And really, the ability to extract this information will happen not just from CT, but actually will also be able, uh, we'll be able to extract that information from this device. The really, one of the really dramatic, unique aspects of this device is the images are acquired of the patient sitting upright. And so... This really will represent the first true physiologic imaging acquisition um, uh, of lung function, which already includes ventilation and will include perfusion. And of course, the in, during traditional tidal breathing, this is what we really want to study. If CT, you're limited by extremes, by still pictures, and by it's it's very powerful and available. People take large inspirations and large expirations. With tidal breathing in an upright position, we are truly capturing the physiology of the lungs in exactly the way they work during patients and individuals' everyday life. And that's really the game changer. So, Greg, can, can you let us know what the, the, the development status of the scanner is right now? The scanner, uh, excited to report what we, what we didn't report at last RSNA. We now have the scanner deployed in two sites on two continents. And we are collecting live human data in research trials at the University of New South Wales and at Vanderbilt University, where we're collecting data actually on veterans um, in a VA-funded study to look at veterans who are exposed to toxins during deployment. Um, so that's really uh, incredibly exciting. The, the presence of the scanners on those campuses has really uh, generated a lot of other research interests that we have now coming up in the pipeline. 
We'll be deploying a third scanner in the US in the first quarter of next year and a fourth scanner in another location by probably the third quarter of next year. As far as commercialization goes, we're really focusing at this point on using the scanner to validate the principles. I think commercializing a, a large piece of imaging equipment is something that that really would be better for a large imaging company. And and certainly um, where with a physical device, every single component has, you know, a uh, had have right re has regulatory uh, obligations that would need to be revisited in any even minor redesign. So we very much see ourselves as a software as a service company. But what this is doing is giving us, uh, you know, tremendous validation and insight into the core technologies we've developed. You know, we're bullish on the future of the deployment of this technology. And we think, we think that when people see that it can do ventilation and perfusion in seconds during in a fully clothed individual in the time it takes to walk through a TSA screening device, um, we don't think we'll have problems with commercialization. So, Greg, th this uh, video is going live during our RSNA week. What are some of the things that you're highlighting in Chicago this week? A couple of things I would just point out. Um, we are having an innovation um, center presentation with, uh, with our CEO and with the CEO of Phillips North America on Tuesday that, that I think uh, we, we hope people will be able to tune into to discuss our, 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 our relationship in a little more detail. If people come by the booth, we're, we're excited to talk about, I'd say, really three main areas that we've gotten really deep into. I've mentioned already lung cancer screening, but you know we recognize the the rapid growth of lung cancer screening and the 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 stress that the traditional radiology community is under to absorb all of these new patients um, with only ten or fifteen percent penetration in the u s and Australia going live in July of next year. you know we we're building workflows with our technologies to streamline the reporting of lung cancer screening with incidentals. So that's something important we want to show people. We've really doubling down on veterans lung health as uh, as part of our just our core mission and whether that's in lung cancer screening in um in looking at individuals who've been exposed to toxins or just the large amount of 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 undiagnosed COPD and interstitial disease. That's a that's a key focus. And the the the, the third I'd point out is there's an increasing global awareness around unexplained dyspnea, um, shortness of breath in patients that really uh, current tests are not ex exposing. Some people are looking at dyspnea clinics. It's a very high end and expensive um, academic approach. We know that primary care pulmonologists, cardiologists are really overwhelmed with patients who have this very generic complaint that's very hard to document. So we're coming up with easy to use quick triage tools where radiologists can add significant value by simply adding an additional analysis to the CTs they're already ordering. So we're hoping people will, will get a taste of those, uh, those particular issues at our booth. All right, excellent. So uh, now that we're, we're speaking about RSNA, um, I understand that you guys have kind of a novel way that you're demonstrating the, the hardware scanner that we talked about. Tom, can you walk us through that? Yeah, thanks, Brian. So we've opted for a, a virtual reality environment that, that gives us a very focused and immersive environment. A number of reasons, but one of, the, one of the primary reasons there is the device itself really lends itself all to, to, to experiencing the design and getting, getting right in there and understanding, immersing yourself in the environment that, that we've tried to create in the design of the, the scanner. You know, we wanted to have something that's that, that's an intimidating experience and, and VR enables us to really demonstrate that. So what I'd really suggest now, Brian, is, is, is put the headset on and, and let's go and check it out. Let's do it. All right. So I have the headset on now and we're in the virtual environment. Super cool. And I'm going to navigate with the, by going to the little blue uh, cone here or, or cylinder. So Greg... These are the images that the uh, yeah. the system produces. These color coded images here that we're seeing. Yeah, that's correct. These are actual images um, from uh, from from human lungs. Um, the 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 color coding uh, shows the pattern of ventilation, with green representing areas of average ventilation, blue representing areas of increased ventilation, and red decreased ventilation. 
All right, very good. All right, well, let's go take a look at the scanner. So this is the actual, uh, the hardware piece that we talked about earlier. And let's walk into the room. Uh, so this is this is the scanner itself. Tom, you want to describe what we're looking at here? Yeah, sure. So this is built on the, this is our second generation, Brian. So essentially built on the, the first generation of four beam lines. So four fluoros capturing a simultaneous acquisition of one breath. Um, some of the key advantages of this of this design is it really lends itself better to to scanning pediatrics. So that was one of the one of the early limitations on the device. But with with this device, we're really able to um, accommodate pediatric scanning down to um, children as young as six months old. All right, very good. So it looks like we've got some interesting stuff in there. So let's go take a look. What are we looking at here? This is um, what we're looking at here, Brian. Is a, what we call internally as robo lungs. So in order for us to develop a dynamic scanner, we really need dynamic scanner development tools. And, and the RoboLung we developed internally as a dynamic phantom. So as you can see, this is, this is really representative of, of what we have in real life in our lab in, uh, in Melbourne. So we've got full dynamic breath. Not only does it perform mechanically like uh, the human, human lungs perform, but also it mimics tissue materials so that when we x-ray it, it gives us really good um, very similar um, equivalents in in the X-ray outputs, so helps us development develop the tool, develop the device, uh, and 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 really accelerates our development pathway. All right, very good. And, and Greg, you've got something else that you want us to take a look at too, correct? What are we looking at uh, up here? Yeah, so this is yeah, Brian. This is actually the patient view. So you essentially this is what individuals would see. You know. As, as you can see, this was really built to be a uh, human scale and not intimidating, a comfortable experience. Um, very that open. screen there. I'm sorry. It's very open. Very open. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that screen there um, is programmable uh, in our, you know, thought about extending this down to pediatric populations. You know, we're, we're talking about one breath. A person only needs to sit there for the time it takes to take one breath in and out. Um, but, but we can have entertainment on that screen. We can have information uh, for patients and generally just creates that sort of warm, uh, non-claustrophobic kind of welcoming feel. We, we see this working in uh, very high throughput environments given the simplicity of the image acquisition. Mm, very good. And so you're going to have all of this. Uh, this is all in your booth at RSNA. People can go in there and take a look and, and look at Robo Lung and everything else. Absolutely. All right. Very good. All right. Wow. That was super cool. So um, you're saying, Greg, that, that people can go by your booth at RSNA this week and, and, and take a look at this uh, virtual uh, environment and check out the scanner? Absolutely. We, uh, we want to welcome everyone to uh, put on the headset and come in and, and get all these details. We'll be in the South Hall at 2918-2918. And uh, are looking forward to seeing everyone. All right. Very good. Uh, Tom Harris, Greg Mogul of 40 Medical Gentlemen, thanks so much for, for being with us today. It was really fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.